In our present circumstances, of course, the veneration of the cross will take place from afar. Please remain in your seats when the cross is brought in for veneration, but the choir will sing uh, for that period. In the, in the reading of the Passion, there is a congregational part, but uh, of course you should endeavour to do that in a, in a subdued voice, but in a, in a, with a collection of subdued voices. I think we should hear the, uh, the relevant parts. Let us pray. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high, just as there were many who were astonished at him. So marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. 
Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has, been, he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made transgression, made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no, longing, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. This is the word of the Lord. Went out to them and asked 
Who is it you want? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I am he. And there stood Judas, the traitor, with them. When he said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, Jesus asked, Who is it you want? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Then Jesus said, I have told you that I am he. If I am the man you want, let these others go. This was to make good his words. I have not lost one of those whom you gave me. Thereupon Simon Peter drew the sword he was wearing and struck at the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Sheathe your sword. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? The troops with their commander and the Jewish police now arrested Jesus and secured him. They took him first to Annas. Annas was father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest for that year. The same Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it would be to their interest if one man died for their whole people. Jesus was followed by Simon Peter and another disciple. This disciple who was acquainted with the high priest went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard but Peter halted at the door outside. So the other disciple, the high priest's acquaintance, went out again and spoke to the woman at the door and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Are you another of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. The servants and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and were standing round it warming themselves. And Peter too was standing with them, sharing the wall. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about what he taught. Jesus replied, I have spoken openly to all the world. I have always taught in synagogue and in the temple, where all Jews congregate. I have said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask my hearers what I told them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the police who was standing next to him struck him on the face, exclaiming, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If I spoke amiss, state it, state it in evidence. If I spoke well, why strike me? So Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter stood warming himself. The others asked, Are you another of his disciples? But he denied it. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, insisted, Did I not see you with him in the garden? Peter denied again, and just then a cock crew. From Caiaphas, Jesus was led into the governor's headquarters. It was now early morning, and the Jews themselves stayed outside the headquarters to avoid defilement, so that they could eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If you were not a criminal, we should not have brought him before you. Pilate said, Take him away, try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are not allowed to put any man to death. Thus they ensured the fulfillment of the words by which Jesus had indicted the man of his death. Pilate then went back into his headquarters and summoned Jesus. He asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Is that your own idea, or have others suggested it to you? Pilate said, What? Am I a Jew? Your own nation and their chief priests have brought you before me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If it did, my followers would be fighting to save me from arrest by the Jews. My kingly authority comes from elsewhere. Pilate said, You are a king then. Jesus replied, King is your word. My task is to bear witness to the truth. For this was I born, for this I came into the world. And all who are not deaf to truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, with those words went out again to the Jews. He said, For my part, I have no risk against him, but you have not so, and I will one person who you have not so. Would you like me to release the king of the Jews? Again the clamour arose. Not we want Barabbas. Barabbas was a 
the banquet. Pilate now took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, and robed him in a purple cloak. Then time after time they came up to him crying, and struck him on the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. Pilate said, Behold the man. The chief priests and their henchmen saw him and shouted, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate said, Take him and crucify him yourselves. For my heart I find no place against him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and by that When Pilate heard that, he was more afraid than ever, and going back into his headquarters, he asked Jesus, Where have you come from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate said, Do you refuse to speak to me? Surely you know that I have authority to release you, and I have authority to crucify you. Jesus replied, You would have no authority at all over me, if it had not been granted you from above, and therefore the deeper guilt lies with the man who handed me over to you. From that moment, Pilate tried hard to release him, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend to Caesar. Any man who claims to be a king is defying Caesar. When Pilate heard what they were saying, he brought Jesus out and took his seat on the tribunal at the palace known as the pavement, Gabbatha in the language of the Jews. It was the eve of Passover, about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They shouted, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Crucify your king. The Jews replied, We have no king. Then at last, to satisfy them, he handed Jesus over to be crucified. Jesus was now taken in charge, and carrying his own cross, went out to the place of the skull, as it is called, or in the Jews' language, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on the right, one on the left, and Jesus between them. And Pilate wrote an inscription to be fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This inscription was read by many Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the inscription was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Then the Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, You shall not write King of the Jews, write in to be King of the Jews. Pilate replied, What I have written, I have written. The soldiers, having crucified Jesus, took possession of his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, leaving out the tunic. The tunic was seamless, woven in one piece throughout. So they said to one another, We must not tear this, let us toss it. And thus the text of Scripture came true. They shared my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. That is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, near the cross where Jesus hung, stood his mother with his sister, Mary, wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother with the disciple whom he loved standing beside her. He said to her, Mother, there is your son. And to the disciple, There is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple took her into his home. After that, Jesus, aware that all had now come to its appointed end, said in fulfilment of scripture, I thirst. A jar stood there full of sour wine, so they soaked a sponge with the wine, fixed it on a javelin, and held it up to his lips. Having received the wine, he said, It is accomplished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Because it was the eve of Passover, the Jews were anxious that the body should not remain on the cross for the coming Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they requested Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers accordingly came to the first of his fellow victims, and to the second, and broke their legs. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers stabbed his side with a lance, and at once there was a flow of blood and water. This is vouched for by an eyewitness, whose evidence is to be trusted. He knows that he speaks the truth, so that you too may believe. For this happened in fulfilment of the text of Scripture. No bone of his shall be broken. And another text says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. This is the passion of the Lord. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world.
God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore we pray to our Heavenly Father for people everywhere, according to their needs. Let us pray for the Church of God throughout the world, for unity in faith, in witness and in service, for bishops and other ministers and those whom they serve, for Robert, our bishop, and the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this place, for those to be baptized, for those who are mocked and persecuted for their faith, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the nations of the world and for their leaders, for Elizabeth our Queen and the Parliament of this land, for those who administer the law and all who serve in public office, for all who strive for justice and reconciliation, that by God's help the world may live in peace and freedom. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will is our peace, turn our hearts and the hearts of all to yourself, that by the power of your Spirit, the peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's ancient people, the Jews, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christian and Jew, for the removal of our blindness and bitterness of heart, that God will grant us grace to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in the love of his name. Lord God of Abraham, bless the children of your covenant, both Jew and Christian. Take from us all blindness and bitterness of heart and hasten the coming of your kingdom. When the Gentiles shall be gathered in, all Israel shall be saved, and we shall dwell together in mutual love and peace under the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in the gospel of Christ, for those who have not heard the message of salvation, for all who have lost faith, for the contemptuous and scornful, for those who are enemies of Christ, and persecute those who follow him, for all who deny the faith of Christ crucified, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the people of the earth, have compassion on all who do not know you, and by the preaching of your gospel with grace and peace, gather them into one fold of the one shepherd, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all who are sick, for those in darkness, in doubt and in despair, in loneliness and in fear, for prisoners, captives and refugees, for the victims of false accusations and violence, for all at the point of death and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sick, the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your children who cry out of any trouble, and to every distressed soul grant mercy, relief, and refreshment, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us commend ourselves and all God's children to his unfailing love, and pray for the grace of a holy life, that with all who have died in the peace of Christ, we may come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of the resurrection. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, and by the tranquil operation of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of our salvation, and let the whole world feel and see that things which were cast down are being raised up, 
and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning to perfection through him from whom they took their origin, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord, and to us sinners forgiveness and everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, God, now and forever. Amen.